Johto is a Pokemon region that is near and dear to my heart. It's always been my favorite region, but even a Johto fanboy like me doesn't know everything about it, which is why today we're going to be covering 10 awesome facts about Johto that you may not know about. These are all pretty dang cool if I do say so myself, and they make me like Johto even more, which is honestly hard to do to be honest. So with that said, let's get right into it. One of the biggest features that the Johto games introduced was breeding, and being able to hatch Pokemon out of an egg. While we have seen Pokemon eggs of many shapes and sizes over the years, the basic normal Pokemon egg looks like this. While looking pretty much like your standard egg, the design of the basic Pokemon egg is very likely a reference to Yoshi. Not only the character, but the literal game called Yoshi for the NES, as not only was that game developed by Game Freak, the same people who make Pokemon, but Yoshi's Egg also made one of its earliest appearances in this title, and it's near identical in appearance to the Pokemon Egg. So little did many of us know that Game Freak was actually referencing their own history right in front of all of us with these eggs. So between the release of most generations of Pokemon is about three years worth of time, and typically, once a new generation comes out, it usually takes around two-ish years for them to announce the next one. However, this was not the case for Generation 2, as the Johto games were formally revealed a mere five months after Pokemon Red and Green were released, being formally announced in July of 1996 within the August issue of Koro Koro, while Pokemon Red and Green released at the end of February of that same year. Along with the announcement of the games, Ho-Oh was officially shown off as well, meaning that its appearance in the anime in the first episode was not actually the first time Ho-Oh was seen, as the first episode of the anime came out in 1997. These days, waiting five months after the release of one generation for the announcement of the next one is literally impossible, and it's pretty wild that it happened at all, even all the way back then. The Radio Tower is one of the most important places within the entire Gold and Silver games, with its inclusion being planned pretty much from the outset. However, something interesting about this location is that in Heart Gold and Soul Silver, the appearance of the Radio Tower actually looks more similar to a version from the early beta days of Gold and Silver, as opposed to the design that made the final version of the original games. So maybe, when developing the remakes, Game Freak decided to pull from their vault from the earliest days of Gen 2's existence. So I made a video not too long ago explaining the origin of every main series Pokemon game name, but there's one possible element of one of the Johto game names that I did not mention in that video. As it was developed specifically for the Game Boy Color, one inspiration for Pokemon Crystal's name could come from the fact that many crystals can act as prisms, meaning they can refract and split up light that passes through them into many different colors, which would be very symbolic for the name of a Pokemon game made for a system whose signature feature is its ability to display color. I can't technically say this is a confirmed fact, but I think it would be a pretty dang big coincidence if it wasn't, but also a cool one too, which is why I wanted to bring it up. In Olivine City, you are able to battle the gym leader Jasmine, who specializes in Steel-type Pokemon, but that is not the type she has always used. You may have noticed that Jasmine's gym in the original Johto games has a very rocky theme. Well, according to a gentleman in the Olivine City Lighthouse, Jasmine used to train rock types before the steel type was discovered. The fact that the steel type is referred to as a discovery here is especially cool, because it also implies that it was a recent discovery given how Jasmine's gym is still set up for rock types, and that just adds a whole new layer of fascination to the Pokemon timeline where we have whole types being discovered as a canon part of the games instead of them just magically being there whenever Game Freak decides to add a new one. 
it's also somewhat of an offhand detail as well, which can make it easy to miss or forget about. One really small but amazing detail in the Johto remakes, Heart Gold and Soul Silver, concerns the apricorn trees. If you just so happen to be standing next to an apricorn tree that has already had its apricorn picked and the clock strikes midnight, the tree will actually sparkle as a new apricorn appears on it. You would really have to be in the right place at the right time to notice this one on your own, but it's an insanely cool attention to detail, even if most won't actually notice it on their own. Also in Heart Gold and Soul Silver is another small detail that is cool that most wouldn't come across. While in Seanwood City, if you are only in possession of one Pokemon and have no others either in your party or your PC, an NPC in the Pokemon Center will give you a Tentacool. This is likely to ensure that you actually have a way to leave Seanwood City if for some reason your only Pokemon couldn't learn Surf or Fly. This makes sense as a failsafe for sure, but is also a cool small detail that you would almost never encounter during normal gameplay. Speaking of Seanwood City, it has to be surfed to because it is detached from mainland Johto. In fact, it's not even based on the Kansai region of Japan, where Johto is based. It's technically based on the next region over, Shikoku, which sits between Kansai and Kyushu, which is based on Hoenn. Since the Japanese-based Pokemon regions line up pretty much identically in terms of their location to where their real-world counterparts are, it can somewhat be assumed that Seanwood City sits at the edge of another Pokemon region that we have never seen before, especially because we can also see that the land itself that Seanwood sits on extends off the edge of the map. It's become very intriguing to me recently whether we will actually get another Japanese-based Pokemon region in the future, and given these details, it would be very cool to see the Shikoku area of the Pokemon world, west of Johto, be explored in a little more detail. The legendary beasts, Entei, Suicune, and Raikou are some of the most important Pokemon in Johto and some of the coolest of all time. They were designed by Muneo Saito, who actually commented on their creation several years ago on Twitter, saying in particular about Raikou that at one point it was blue and had a drum on its back, a description which is very different to the final design. There was, however, a piece of concept art also drawn by Muneo Saito that heavily resembles Raikou, but is blue and notably also has the coloration of Suicune. It does lack the drum that Saito described, but this could possibly be an iteration of Raikou's design that took place either before or after the design with the drum on its back. And it's extremely fascinating to think about what that could have looked like, and is also an amazing look into the design process behind one of the most popular Pokemon ever. Concerning another legendary Pokemon of Johto, Ho-Oh is obviously one of the most iconic Pokemon ever, but there is a really cool detail about it that can be really easy to miss or forget. According to the director of the Goldenrod Radio Tower, there used to be a third tower like the Bell and Brass Towers in Ecruteague City that stood in Goldenrod where the radio tower is now, and Ho-Oh used to visit the tower. This is how the radio director came into possession of the Rainbow Wing, and the Silver Wing for that matter, depending on what game you're playing. However, this sacred tower was later demolished, with its bell being put on display right outside the radio tower in Heart Gold and Soul Silver. Johto is already a very historical region, but a story like this just adds to its lore even more, and has me dying to be able to see this third tower for myself someday. Maybe if Pokemon Legends becomes its own series, we could actually get a game about Johto where we could see this happen. Who knows? Well, those were some cool facts about Johto and the Johto-based games. If you enjoyed, leave a like and subscribe for more Pokemon content all the time. 
You can also support the channel further by checking out my Pokemon remixes on Spotify and by watching my Pokemon Cardinal series here on YouTube, both of which are massively appreciated and help out so, so much. With that said, I will see you all soon with another video, and until then, as always, I love you all, and I will smell you guys later.